Right. Chinoy Caves going to the dark caves. We just come from the light cave. My God, I'm tired. I'm unfit and I'm realizing that right now. But this is a beautiful place. Beautiful place. Look at that. Look at that. Hey. Here's the tent where we were having our event. That's a bush, Zimbabwean bush. People are tired from walking. Our dignities from Nigeria sitting over there. We must come before we start. So we are taking a walk now into the dark caves. This is Mr. Mtasa, one of uh, Zimbabwe's amazing lawyers, farming over a thousand hectares. Mr. Mtasa, Mr. Mtasa, Mr. Mtasa. Mr. Mtasa. I'm just telling people here with the Iwe, yes, you're doing over a thousand hectares of uh, 1200 to be precise. Yes, what are you? 1200 hectares. What are you farming? And these are the, the other gang also doing the same thing. Yeah. So we're going to hear from Mr. Mtasa quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yes, tell me, my brother, what are you doing on your farm? No, I'm doing a thousand hectares of maize. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm just a row cropping guy. And raw crops is mainly your maize, wheat, and soya bean. Loving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loving. And uh, having benefited from the land reform in 2001. How old were Argu you in 2001? I was 24. Arguably, I was the youngest beneficiary then. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, um, you know, I've just grown from doing 20 hectares of wheat uh, in 2001. And gradually, slowly, slowly, I went up until I was doing like 800 in about 2015. <laughs> And then when the government support came in, the command agriculture, where we're getting subsidized inputs and so forth, I upped my game to 1,200. So command has helped people to farm more. Exactly, because it's capital intensive. So when you get that help of subsidized fertilizer, uh, chemicals and everything, you know, you get your working capital, then you can up your game. Wow. Yeah. So where were you getting funding all along to fund your projects? Yeah, local banks. All the local banks were supporting, but uh, with heavy interest rates, you know, so that then will turn you down, not to, you know, increase your scale. But uh, getting that government support, the subsidies actually helped. We've been discussing something. Um, getting money from South Africa is cheaper than getting money from Zim. Mm -hmm. If we can get money from SA for farmers like you and young farmers like you mm -hmm. at 10%, mm -hmm. would that work better than the 50 so percents that you guys are paying now? You, well, my opinion is uh, it's best to support local. Probably if uh, the foreign banks are going to feed into our banks yes. to support the whole system, right. and then we get it from our banks, right. you get what I'm saying, so that we support our own economy. And that's how our, 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 I believe our own economy is going to grow. So can black farmers farm? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I always give a, an example. Like, if you look at the English Premier League, you know, um, most of us, they support either Chelsea, Man U, and whatever it is. You see that with exposure, the amount of black guys who are now playing professional, who have understood and mastered how to make money out of playing soccer, it's, it's enormous, you know. And that's the same thing when it comes to agriculture in this country, is that we are taking those baby steps, but we're getting there. Out of the, all the guys that benefited from land reform on, on its inception, uh, we're talking about now, it has increased from about 10%, you know, between uh, 2000 and 2010, and we are now on about 35%, wow. you know, which means if you look at that's in 20 years, and farming is long term, you know, people should always understand that it's not like any other business. It's going to take at least about 60 to 70 years, my projection for us as the land beneficiaries in this country to have achieved 100% utilization and mastered the art of it. But we have to be patient. Like farming needs is for patient people. It's not like a fast, quick money game, you know? So it takes that and farming is a lifestyle. Do you get it? Yeah. So we are coming from another world of subsistence farming and coming into the commercial way of doing things. So we go gradually and it takes a couple of years like the statistics that I've just said, but we'll get there, definitely, definitely we'll get there. I find it interesting that we're having this discussion in Chinoy where the liberation struggle started. Sure. And I know um, your forefathers are chiefs of this land. Sure. 
They've been very instrumental in the liberation, sure. the wars that took place before liberation. Sure. They know what Chimurenga is. Yes. Can you give us a parting shot before I talk to Dean next to you um, about how the significance of this place and independence coming has to do with the farming that you guys are doing? Okay, it, it, it sets the tone and it sets the pace and that bar is very high that our forefathers, our grandfathers and whatever it is and our fathers even who are war veterans who are still living today that they fought a successful war and now we are in an economical war where this generation, my generation are just riding on a piece of cake that our forefathers and our fathers fought for and ours is to just emancipate the economic structure of this country that's an easier task. And guys, we can do it. Yeah. Young guys, Definitely. farming is not for old madalas. Farming is for young people. Because like this you. job, yes, because this job is so demanding you don't understand. So let's not take our farms as retirement homes to say you're working somewhere and then you want to go and retire on the farm. No, 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 no. We are killing our economy because Zimbabwe is agro-based and definitely our economy hinges on agriculture. Thank you. Brilliant. Dean, yes. you're another farmer who's doing amazing things. Uh, I'm an engineer. Engineer? Yeah, <laughs> the mod, the mod nut. So you are the one who's making the farming the possible? The farming implements, yeah. Right. Talk to me about that. Yeah. Uh, generally, uh, we as ModNet, uh, we're manufacturing uh, locally uh, three implements so far, and uh, we're being supported by the government. So hold on, hold on. You're saying to me mm. that we are manufacturing tools in Zimbabwe? Yeah, we definitely. We Tell are. me more. Yeah, so we are manufacturing uh, disc arrows, um, bed makers, some call them ridges, and uh, plows and reapers. We are doing it in Zimbabwe. Wow, that's yes. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, what yeah. made you start producing these kinds uh, of What made us start producing? Actually, the background is um, through like um, our CEO, Jeremy. He started by fabricating um, uh, uh, farm machinery from the farms. Then later, we then went on to understand that, no, you know, why can't we just start by manufacturing to cover up for the foreign currency shortage in the country? Yes. Amazing stuff. Yeah. So tell me, we hear that there might be a recapitalization of Zisco. There yes. might be a steel plant that's going to be opened mm -hmm. by the Chinese. What do you think this is going to do? I think that's going to be very instrumental to the country. But right now, we're actually importing most of our steel from South Africa. And you know, imagine and South Africa that, is running out of steel and iron. Exactly, and South so Africa Zimbabwe is running out of take, steel. Must take over. And those are like big strides. Huh? When we have Cisco Steel open, it's going to be a, a positive move to our industry. It will support us positively. I think the margins that we have on our selling uh, points will be actually better. Wow. Would have improved. I think, let's say, for example, we're selling a disc car of 7.3. With Cisco Steel open, you'll be shocked. Maybe 4.2. And you studied uh, engineering? Yeah, agriculture Lovely. engineering. Lovely, my guy. Yes. Where did you study it? Africa University. Brilliant stuff. Yes. So Zimbabwe has got what it takes. Yes. To make a nice takes. to farm. To farm and to irrigate. <laughs> because we're actually working on uh, small order irrigation programs. Like you see with this country, when we talk of wheat, we're just looking at only the big farmers, the commercial farmers and the A2 farmers, just to be specific. Uh, when it comes to the A1 farmers and the communal farmers, especially the communal farmers, they can actually contribute. You know, like, um, I think just before, in, be, between 1980 and 1990, communal farmers used to actually contribute a significant amount of maize. Huh? Yes. 60, um, so that 51%. same concept can be utilized again huh? by actually introducing smallholder irrigation by use of HTP pipes, just fixed on a small acreage, so that they also contribute to the grid on the wheat. Let's yep. go down, my brother. Let's go see how the caves are telling yes. us a story about what you're telling us. Yes, Thanks, yes, my yes. brother.